it's been important that I've, I've started off with a few. You want to get your first one under your belt, and then you know, and then they hopefully come along after that. But uh, it's the first one that matters, and and you go on from there. And I've I've been playing in games, so uh, the chances have been there as well. Sheringham is now playing a leading part at United, but his most outstanding performances have come in a supporting role. Who can forget his walk-on cameo in United's triumph over Bayern two years ago? After equalising, a minute later, he directed the ball to Solskjaer for the winner. I can't take too much credit for that because the team are there, which done it for the, for the whole season, and uh, they're the players that were in form. I was just, uh, when, when you bring a sub on, it's, a, it's not a last throw of the dice, but you, you try to change things, and uh, lucky, lucky for us, thing, things happened when that, when that occurred. Much of last season was also spent as an understudy. Sheringham was restricted to only 14 first-team appearances. Doubt was cast whether he would continue to be part of Sir Alex Ferguson's plans. Competition for places was hard, and his contract was coming to an end. Would he stay, or would he go? Welcome in, get a drink. You know, there was a lot of things to take into account, but the manager's word is, is the one that you want to hear. It's not about... Uh, supporters, players, chairman, whatever. It's, the manager picks the team at the end of the day. There's no guarantees in football, I know that, but he wanted me to stay. He wanted me to be part of his squad, so that was good enough for me. Sheringham has more than 250 first-class goals to his name. Seven of those have come in the Champions League. He's played 38 times for his country, the most recent against Finland in a World Cup qualifier last month, and that was after a two-year break. Sheringham still believes he has plenty to offer, despite being left out of England's squad for the next game against Italy. But he's got a message for the new England manager, Sven Joran Eriksson. As a footballer, you have to keep faith in the way you play. And uh, I've played for England before, I've had good games, I've had bad games. And uh, that ambition drives you on to, to want to put it right as such and, and play well again. And uh, I want to I want to pit myself uh, against the top players, and um, that includes international level. So there's no way I was ever going to rule that out from my point of view because uh, you know my pride's still strong, and I'm, I want to play for England. Manchester United certainly haven't had it all their own way in this year's tournament. Their two defeats raised a few eyebrows within the footballing fraternity. Ferguson accepted his share of the blame for his team selection against PSV. But the problem could be more deep-rooted. Have they lost their European focus? And how do you motivate 11 millionaires who have already won everything? <laughs> Let's put it this way, I don't think you go into football to earn money, or you didn't as a kid when we was growing up. It was to, to show how good you were as a footballer and to get the adulation from a crowd on a Saturday afternoon of 68,000 people packed into Old Trafford now. That, that's that's the, the drive you get as a young footballer. And uh, the players that Alex Ferguson has assembled at Manchester United, I, I think every one of them uh, gets their buzz from that rather than the, uh, the money. Manchester United stood to lose millions if they failed to reach the second stage of the tournament. But that shouldn't have concerned the players. Their only thought had to be winning. They'd been convincingly outplayed in their previous match against Anderlecht. This 2-1 defeat in Brussels meant that United would have to beat Dinamo to qualify in their final game at Old Trafford. And they'd have to improve substantially. In five attempts, United had failed to beat teams from the former Soviet Union. We've got some great teams in our, our group. And uh, I think we knew at the time that it was going to go down to the last game. And we've got our last game at home. And uh, we need to do well in that to uh, make sure we go through. When you're at a club like Manchester United, you need to win things. And uh, you can talk about going further than the quarter-final and we get through to the semi-final. That's no good to us, you know. Even though we're, we could be on the verge of going out, we still want to win the competition and anything less would be um, a failure. As Manchester United fans headed for Old Trafford for their last game in Group G, they probably weren't feeling quite as positive as Teddy Sheringham about becoming European champions again. But they were certainly feeling positive about him. Oh, he's on form, he's on form, he's class. 
He's doing well. He's, he's the man for us. Dwight York's not playing very well, yeah. but Tony Sheringham's going to do a bit this first tonight. England squad definitely for the Finland match. Definitely. definitely. Tony Sheringham is amazing. He's going to get two goals tonight, definitely. So hope and expectation. This was the situation going into the game. United were third in Group G. If they won, they went through. If they drew, that would mean relegation to the UEFA Cup. Defeat would mean no European football at all. Totally inconceivable to a club of Manchester United's status and income. But how big a blow would elimination be? Chief Executive Peter Kenyon. From a club of all standing, then uh, would it, you know, would it blip? Yes. Is it a disaster? No because we've got the resources to uh, come through it and compete and get in it again next year. Uh, but right now, I mean, you know, I think everybody is pretty focused on what the job is tonight. <laughs> and that is, you know, and I think the atmosphere will reflect that and from our supporters and uh, this place, will, the roof will come off. In the past, United have failed at home in this competition, notably last year against Real Madrid. But this season, United have won six of their seven home league games. United took time to put pressure on a Ukrainian side, allegedly hit by injuries, but looking reasonably confident and comfortable. Their breakthrough came when Sheringham won the ball whilst Dinamo were on the attack, switching it quickly to Andy Cole, then getting forward to support. United almost made a mess of this one, but they eventually regained control with Sheringham unselfishly setting up Roy Keane. And then going in to finish it off himself. For Teddy Sheringham, that was his 12th goal of this season, and he was involved twice in the build-up to it. But United couldn't finish the game off. They looked anxious. Giggs had gone off injured, Sheringham eventually made way for York, but the second goal to ease the anxiety just did not come. Four minutes from the end, Valery Lobanovsky's side should have made them pay a heavy price for that, a £10 million price. George Demotranzi should have scored here. An equaliser would have put United out, but they were let off the hook. So United straight through to the second phase on the strength of Teddy Sheringham's goal. He's probably playing the best football of his life, they needed him on the night. It was a very tense match. We were just talking about it in, in the change room there, that it was uh, really it was a no-win situation. We was, we was in a situation that if we'd have uh, won, everybody expects it because we expect it to get through. But if we lose, you know, we, we know that we would have got hammered. And uh, that's, what, that's what makes it so tense. It's, it's so different to like cup finals or semi-finals because you know, if you get there or you win it, then it's all great. But um, today was a, a no-win situation.